I can be involved in something and not participate. Okay? We need engagement. So now, getting the voice of people, what do you think about transportation? What impact has it had in your life? That's what this day is. Now, the other important part about this day is we'll be able to use it down the road for grants, for other types of things. Right now, DOT does not have any of this type of data that you're going to see in the day that we're asking you for. They got other data that comes from data sets that they gathered every year and compare, but nothing like we're going to be talking about today. Let's talk about how we want to do this. There's about three parts to it. Now, how many of you, uh, Mun, you got with How many of you have your devices that you can get online and fill, this, fill, fill part of this out online? Okay, got one, two. So we figured that. See, we learned from the last time we tried this and didn't have enough people. So you want to pass a few of those back. What I want you to do, I want you to be able to complete this. But we're going to go through it. We'll go through the first part of the talk. And what I'd like us to be able to do, we're going to be able to have some discussion. That's right. We're going to have the discussion. So this is not, you can pass that back. You can pass, pass, pass that back. We can go complete it, complete it too. Um, All right. We're going to have some discussion. So I want you to look at the first part of this. Any of those would like to uh, do this virtually with us? Just take your phone and go to your browser and put in menti.com and take all the time you need. And it's going to come up with a little box. That looks something like this. So I don't know if everyone can see it. Look at those little box. You simply put in that eight-digit code, 8504-8888, and you'll be right in there. And you'll be registered for the lottery sponsored by Mr. Stokes. <laughs> hey, hey, let me see uh, if the OG is not into it, we can't do it. Let's look at the room. We got it. You just said we don't know how to do that. Technology. It's simple. Yeah. Yeah. This gives us a lot of information. Yeah, that's that's the right that's the right place. So it says wait for the presenter, you're at the right place. How, how many of you have that screen? All right, great. Like I said, take as much time as you need. Yes, sir. Don't forget if if you want internet access, Wi-Fi access, uh, go to your settings and it's it's MCC. Yes, and that will get you access to the internet. Bingo. Yeah, I should have put that up there first. <laughs> My bad. Appreciate you catching that. I'm joining the network as we speak. Many folks in the building might have any questions. Have to have to help me. Yes. Yeah. 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 How about fill on the devices? Everybody good? All right. Are we good? All right. Okay. I'm not good. 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 Yeah, you can go, this is your first page, so we're going to 
we're going to talk through it also. Got it. 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 And it says I've already responded to that question. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It then brings me back to that same screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So once you, once you, um, once you, uh, once you, yeah. Let me say that. Once you, um. Answer the question. It's going to wait. It's going to give you this screen until I change it again. Okay. Yep. 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 Sorry about that. You'll, you'll be changing. Yeah, I'll be changing shortly. Will it come on that Sunday or is it going to be a call this year? So everybody, I want people to get in small groups here. I think this group right here, about three or four people, I want y'all to get together and have a quick discussion about what are the three words that describe why it's important for you to be here. We'll just do this first couple just out loud. What are the three words that that Say why it's so important for you to be here. Education. Education. Okay. Louder. I didn't hear you. What to, else? To Information. 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 Okay. All right. When you think about the climate and morale in your county, or the region. How would you describe that? How would you? How, what would you say about the climate right now, or the morale among folks in the county, in the region? Complacent. Okay. Poor. I missed that. Poor. Poor. Complacent. <coughs> Poor. What else would tell you about what, what you think people feel about the climate or the morale of folks about life, about transportation, anything? Frustrated. Frustrated. Who would say the main source of frustration? Income. Income? Okay. Uh, housing. Huh? Housing. Housing, yeah. Yeah. Income, uh, housing. Drainage. Drainage. Drainage, okay. Hmm. What was that? Drainage. Any other thoughts? You want, what, is, you want one word? Well, no, you don't have to just one. You can talk. You know, this is a way to make sure we get it on paper and then just have a discussion. What, what was, what was, what's your question is, what, what are your thoughts about the, the climate, the morale? One of the things, you know, we know transportation is an issue, but when we've done this in other places, things came up like the whole perception of opportunity. The morale of people, what people feel, how comfortable people feel about their opportunities in the future. So it doesn't have to be one word. Just what do you think about the climate or morale of folks in the region about their future? I would say the divisiveness, the divided community. A divided community? Yeah, divisiveness. Okay, good. Still in Uninformed. Hmm. 
who do tend to, what do people tend to come together the most about and and consistent? What tends to bring people together the most in a region such as this? Natural disaster. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That wipes away everything, but yeah. yeah. It's temporary though. Yeah, it is. I guess that's one of the things about this. You all meet monthly and you have pretty consistent folks coming to meetings and stuff. And hopefully being able to get this information, we can kind of compile and take it back. This is who you are, this is what people think and see. And you see, start that communication process with them. All right, Bunny, we'll go to part two. Okay, now if you will, we're going to start feeling like that part two. This is the thing when we started doing some of the research, we come to find out, want to know what kind of access do you have to, uh, uh, how do you utilize NCDOT? So if you go through and check off those things, whether it's driver's license, your employee, your contractor, Y'all have a, 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 a NCDOT building, office building, in in Martin, in Washington. There. There. Oh, you share. Okay. How uh, how many uh, how often do you have contact with folks in NCDOT in the building in your area? I go to the building, talk to the engineer about our issues. Every now and then, I have to rattle his head. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Well, how many uh, in the room have been to the the actual NCDOT building in the last year? Okay. How many of you had contact other than just driver's license, but about more community stuff? Got a couple of them. That's good. And see, it's stuff like that we also have to change when we're talking about engaging these systems. Sometimes, we, you know, we don't realize they have funds that are available. They have, uh, you know, highway training academies that are available. Do you realize that NCDOT in the last three years spent $911 million on workforce development? <laughs> right. Let's see, the West is famous. Last three years. And it can tell you, we can tell you the top companies that had really no more than uh, with uh, 27 trainees and probably had 30, 40 million, all the way down to one trainee. But it's all open. And the question becomes, how do we position ourselves to make sure? And you know, in this area of DOT, with all the stuff that's going on, there's no way you cannot find folk that want to be in workforce development. Or that you, the people, we can't identify. But when you look across, and look at this, last three years, engineers, zero. No engineers, no black, no minorities, just engineers, period. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, electrician, not engineers, electrician, I'm sorry. You got your heavy machinery, holding, holding flags, you got all those different job categories. But when you get down to electricians, zero for the last three years. That's why this kind of information, information session sharing is important because I know you know of young people, you know people that are in need of job, in need of workforce development. And funds that are getting ready to come down the road uh, in, in the near future, it's going to be in that area, in these areas. So we're going to have to make sure that we have an impact um, in terms of contact with the local and regional and, and countywide DOT offices. Okay, let's turn to the next one here. What we got? What does this look like? Mark? We're asking uh, folks, do they know what the acronyms mean? OJT, DBE, WKFD, that almost flow came out there, HWTA, HUB, NWBE, and Women of Color. Are you going to tell us? <laughs> yeah, we'll let Ms. Tom tell you. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know all of them. We're going to play trivia here in a second. All right. 
Yeah, we're going to play trivia. We're going to do a trivia game. Let's do that. Is everyone giving their, uh, their their first impressions before we let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> All right. Miss Selby, what's H-U-B mean? Yeah, Miss Selby, good. yes, yes, yes. Oh, very good. There it is. Y'all give her a hand. Y'all give her a hand. Actually, underutilized business. <laughs> Historically, underutilized. Business. Okay, okay. Yeah, but you, that's good. That's good, though. That's, that's good. Yeah, that's good. And you got the person. I'm going to keep my applause to <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Good. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Um, Mr. Stokes, I'm gonna give you an easy one here. NWBE. What's that stand for? You said you were gonna give me an easy one. Give me I'll give you this, minority women and what? There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. OJT, anybody? That's right, DBE. Disadvantage, business. That's it, that's it, that's it. They're just like hub businesses, except they're on the transportation side. Yeah. WKFD. It's not an acronym as in each. Yeah, this one's a little tricky. Workforce development. Now, Dr. Thomas, Dr. Thomas put me on game on this one, so I, I, even I didn't know it like, as of two weeks ago. HWTA. Highway Transportation. What is that called? Highway Training Academy. Yeah, highway Training Academy. Because, like, what I'm trying to tell the kids now. Since we know we don't have any black and women and minority electricians in the last three years, in our area, in Shelby, we got one of the few black master electricians in the whole region, North and South Carolina, right there. So they sponsor training academy. You know, we have actually an academy might go six weeks, it might be eight weeks, you get a group of eight weeks, and then you get followed with the workforce development. That's where we're trying to take this, to take this out of the air and make it practical for people that we can impact some of these things. Particularly, look, when I just told you they spent $911 million in three years on workforce development. That is training, training, paying companies and managers, right? To bring in some, at the highest number had 27 for the three years. Some of them had zero trainings or one or two, but they still get the dollars and not increasing that number. So. Why can't we have something even more community-based that can be connected to the community college, but you have a master black electrician with uh, uh, a nonprofit that can do this and trying to work with schools, trying to work with community college, producing students, but the community college not giving them a dime. Yeah. And he, gra he graduated the first black female electrician yeah. in the whole region. Well, I guess that's what these community meetings are for because I didn't know they had a training academy. Did you know they had a training academy? And that's something as much as you are out there, we've been in all these other meetings. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's why we got to educate our community. Even those of us who should know, we don't. And that's this is all part of it. This is how the data helps. You know, to take that kind of stuff, we take that kind of data, but we also take this kind of data that people haven't seen. Did you like you remember uh, when we went and hooked, went into the meeting with DOT? Yeah. After we came out of Shelby, and Tanya Smith was there, who's director of, uh, of Office of Civil Rights. We were asking them about what? 150, 200 people in the room, yeah. that thing? Yeah. And only two people knew what a DBE was. Think about that. And you would assume these are probably more informed folks. So that's why this leaders. Kind of, uh, leaders. 
minority business leaders in the yeah, community. That's yeah, what, that was the same thing you had here. Yeah. Yeah, you were awarded, what, maybe 30 news or recognized yeah. that night. Can I ask a question? I think I'm, I'm trying to bring home for Trisha's piece. Um, how many folk have heard of the Inf uh, Inflation Reduction Act? All right, cool. Um, so it really, is, it's it's not, it's United States investment into uh, transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable energies. Um, so, how many of you all know a kid, maybe in your family, extended family, 15 years old, 14 years old, not sure what they want to do? How many? How many of you may know something like that? How how many of them may want to work with their hands? Okay, cool. So I can keep them mad at coming and get to you. How many of you know a 14, 15 year old who would like to make $100,000 coming out of co high school? High got college, high school. High school. Okay. And this is a real thing because it, what all the data, I work in renewable energy advocacy, and all the data is I have a, um, I have an EV and I have to call my electrician who's a thousand years old to put in my level two charger at the house. He charged me, uh, I think like seven or eight hundred dollars and then, um, but this is a new market that's coming about. It is estimated that the United States will need a hundred thousand new electricians every year to meet these policies goals. So money is going to be coming down the pipe pipeline to train kids to be electricians. And these kids are going to be able, and, and the hundred thousand dollars is the median. I mean, you probably you probably eighty to one hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars to be electrics because there's because there's gonna be people like that who are gonna need their level two chargers put in, new uh, upgrades on their electrical panels, lots of stuff. I've called my electrician way too much uh, and love him to death, but he's getting older and it's gonna need there's a need uh, for these 14, 15 year old kids to, to step into an industry that's that's literally waiting for them. And the challenge for the community is that we have middle school, we have the middle school, we have high school, and we have the uh, community college. But it's going to take the community folk to go in and say, hey, we got kids that are struggling doing stuff, and you won't help when we try to get people to, get, to bring in kids. It, that's what's happening. So what Lester's doing, he got middle school, high school, and he produced, I don't know how many uh, electricians for the community college. Still have families. This is an interesting thing. We have to stop that. We don't work for free. But this is a, what do you call it? This is one of those opportunities um, where we get the junior high school, high school students, and you take them through an academy, you set up a training academy thing. And then you now turn it into workforce development where we're able to hook them up with people and you're getting trained. We've got to think more along those lines, and particularly in the energy, in the energy space. Because yes. uh, uh, he, he does solar, he does electrical charging stations. Got thing with Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, we're putting in all the new charging stations for cars. That can happen in this way. <coughs> and it's finding folks. So that's what I want you to think about. Any other thoughts, Mon, on this? No, no, sir, no, sir. I've moved on to this question. Okay. Just, just in case. So. How many of you, uh, well, I found out today that Wesley worked in transportation. Hey! I didn't know that, but how many of you know folks that are working in the transportation sector, transportation industry? How many, how many of you know some folks? What, uh, what, what areas uh, people that you, you know? School mechanics. School mechanics. Okay. People that work with DOT. Okay. <laughs> transportation. No, this is transportation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and what about you? You had your hand. Well, no, Wesley. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, you got three people. You're the only one that knows. We do. <laughs> no, but this. I just think that's something we got. We really do have to think about that um, because there are opportunities there. Now, let me tell you. You know what the basis for that question is? With uh, uh, workforce development and with uh, DBEs, what our state of practice research told us, this is nationally, was the fact that if you have wraparound services, so you get young people in uh, workforce development and all that, they might have mental health needs, they might have transportation needs, all those kinds of things. And wraparound services were community organizations 
in the community college world, they come together to fill in the gaps to make sure that the young people can get through that transition period. That's why we're able to ask some of that. That's what wrapped around service are, and it's really important. Okay? Okay. I, I don't I don't want to slow your, your presentation down, but so if if we know kids that want to work with their hands, mm -hmm. what steps do we go through to get them in a workforce development? Well, first part of it, I think we need to check out the local community how to see what they have going on because their workforce they have most of them have some kind of workforce development plan that's going on. Then we can check at the state level. We know what we know where um, where the workforce development plans are, and it's in every county. It's just a matter of getting a group of people together. That's why I asked how many have been to uh, DOT, how many have met with folks. That's how we get started. The other part is we can invite uh, what's his name, Benny. Uh, uh, we can, uh, Tanya Smith and Benny heads up this transportation thing to come in, and we have you know what we did in Warren County. We have one Saturday where we got three or four hours to bring people in. We can do NCDIT, yep. NCDOT. They can bring in their people yep. and tell you where the jobs are, where the funds are, right. and the different type of programs that they have. That's what we did in Warren County in, what, in 22? 2022? Yep. 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 yep, yep. So it's that type of thing. That's why we say community engagement is a multifaceted process. Dr. Tom, so at most communities probably have different programs, but uh, I'm curious to know what are the certification programs. Those are programs that students can work with their hands. What are the, I noticed that the horses therapy, I think, is, is one of the areas that Martin has. But what are some of the other certification programs that are offered? Short, those are the short-term programs, training programs, as opposed to the two-year diploma. Right. There are some, some community college offer certification, maybe 12, 15-week programs. And a lot of those certification programs, students are already employed, be, are recruited and employed before they even finish the program in some of these certification programs. I don't know what Martin County offers, but I know in my uh, home county, uh, a lot of those kids, uh, electric, electrical, poles, uh, uh, health care, uh, welding. welding, which is one of the biggest ones, exactly. Do they offer that here? In Dare County, not here. I know we have the Lawn Technician here. Yeah. Here, and uh, I'm not sure. I, I think there's a couple other ones, but I'm not sure exactly. What All the programs. Yeah. Or some short courses like that that you can certify. Yeah. Especially with the Lawn Tech crew, they're going to get the job off. Yeah. yeah. And they make just as much money as college degree yeah. students yeah. in many cases. Well, you yeah. know what we learned from uh, with Lester there, and then there's a different, what I understand, doing in Shelby, we got. The community college, you know, where we, we ride by, we see all the poles, and we see people. Yeah. I'll never see nobody look like us. Yeah. First of all, I ain't on the road by there for years. in my hometown. <laughs> but secondly, the other thing is about it, community college seems to prepare them to go from the street to the building. Mm -hmm. What less, but they hadn't prepared them well to do from into the building, to do the work in the building. That's what exactly. less has been doing, that other part. So he's trained the last two black, uh, what, uh, female, what, licensed female uh, electricians in, the, in Cleveland County. We need to think about that here. But there's a different thing to hook it up from the street, and then when you get to the building, that's a whole other type of wiring and stuff. And that's where he's able to do both of them. Uh, I was, yes, ma'am, I think you had your hand up. Yes, sir. I was just going to ask about what about the um, workforce development agency issues throughout the I know they have training dollars and mm -hmm. um, and they're also partnering with a program I can't remember is NC because they're partnering with Elizabeth City State University mm -hmm. on the state level mm -hmm. and they wanted X amount of people with certifications there's no particular age by 2030 yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the program yeah. but, you know and when, when, it, when it says to us, we're going to have to be proactive on this end. I wrote in one of, in a book called Lead the Way, um, mm -hmm. Principles and Practices of uh, Community and Civic Engagement. We wrote in there, if the institutions are not reaching out to you, we have to reach into them. And this is one of those things. 
these agencies have been there forever. But if we don't have a, a community folks that are moving in and out, that can move in and be educated enough to ask the right questions, to know that their grant dollars are available, to know how much has come into this region, and know how much has, has or has not been spent with a particular population, given the fact that the grant dollars themselves are based upon the data on underserved populations. But if you don't have anybody making that argument, because we're going to ask some of these folks in DOT that we will be surveying the, uh, 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 and, and contracts and all that, ask them the same thing, the same type of question, but on the opposite end of the continuum. And ask them how many people have been to your office, how many times have you gone out and presented uh, to minority groups about what's available, and then on the other side, we're going to ask our own folks that same question. So community engagement is a multifaceted process, inside out, outside in at the same time. What's happening is we don't have enough people prepared to go in and create leverage and voice in the spaces that are set up in the systems that we participate in. City government, <coughs> county government, school systems, public health, uh, uh, correction, you know, juvenile justice, just like all the dollars sitting there with juvenile justice. And we don't have people on the ground organizing them to get the great thing together, to go get it, to change the thing that we point out. This is how all of this comes together from a community point of view. And let's don't forget the power of this kind of data to fuse with that knowledge to start to educate people. May, may I just say this? And <clears throat> because I know sometimes we have we have community engagement kinds of things like this is what this is right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, and, and I'm not saying this trying to be critical, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to speak uh, as best as I can. Sometimes when the people that have come out to in, to engage the community, they really talk so high above people's heads. Mm -hmm. And are we talking about these acronyms? Mm -hmm. We went about and talked about you know what what that would means. But other than you all saying what it stands for. You know, the folk really don't get to, to learn anything about right. what it means. Right. But then when, when we're doing the presentations, we only use the, anacron the acronyms, mm -hmm. still speaking above people's heads. Yeah. So they, well, the intent today was not to get into all of that, but I to see. kind of present it as a context, which you're absolutely right. But that's why we have to think about what it is we need to educate our people about. And I'll say this. Uh, about you know the whole thing about talking over over, over folk head. I try to make sure I do this. Look, uh, people say, "Oh yeah, you're so deep." Oh, no, nah, it ain't deep. Just need to get focused. But I refuse to teach down. Mm -hmm. I can teach better. I can teach with clarity. But I'll use words sometimes to educate people because once folks start using the word, what they mean, that you got it conceptually. But I agree with you. We have to find out how do we communicate better. Uh, uh, with, with with the public, but though, hey, but that's don't take that intellectual sting out the top. That's the growth. That's the right. new knowledge. But like you said, now explain this new knowledge to me so I can. That's good. I like that. Other thoughts before we move on. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, this is gonna be getting me daily here. What y'all think about that? This is an interesting one, y'all. I kind of threw this one in. I uh. I did that for my uh, dissertation. We looked at personal economic opportunity versus group economic opportunity. So, uh, and our folk tend to see, so their personal economic opportunity is good, but as African Americans as a group, they did not see that as well. So, up here we're asking, in your county, how do you see on a scale of one to five uh, a 2.0 in terms of how do you see the economic opportunity for the county that you're in? Okay, for the reason, 2.3, what do you think the economic opportunity is for minority businesses? 3.3, what about the economic opportunity for black and brown citizens? 2.5, and interesting enough, look, what did that tell you about the other study? We did, yep, the hypothesis is true. This is we see our personal economic opportunity versus when we look at our family, we look at friends, look at neighborhood, we don't see their economic opportunities as well, as good as we see that for us personally. Isn't that interesting? It's a simple, uh, a credit called a perception of economic opportunity scale. I just pulled two of the questions out. In region, I was just looking at uh, the whole state, I mean, the 
no, this region right here, that the this region, region, yeah, yeah, this region. yeah, yeah. This, 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 this is an E N C region. That's what I said. That's why I wanted to get yeah. this data here. Yeah, you know, I was talking things like economic opportunity, like material and time. But I guess you can probably go all that. Yeah, and then you kind of think about the what do you call it? The, the similarities across demographics, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of make a few assumptions about it. But yeah, it'll be even better when we send out the broader survey. We get this back in from a lot more people, then we'll be able to change because it also has on there about the county that yes. then we'll be able to take a deeper look and know. But the whole point is, this is a very powerful statement for NCDOT, OCR to understand. Hey. This is how they see economic opportunity, and we're talking about the impact of transportation on economic opportunity. Okay? All right, let's go to the next one here. Okay, <clears throat> so how aware are you uh, of the following concept within uh, 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 transportation? What do you, uh, how, much, how, how aware are you, say, of, uh, you are of, uh, you know, economic justice and the, the whole historical impact. So on the scale of one to five, we're saying, want you to rate that. Can they do, uh, can, uh, are they able to do this on the regular rate? Yeah. Oh, you got it up. Okay. Yeah, sure. So what y'all going to do that? Rate, rate each one of those. So what is your awareness of the following concepts in the context of transportation, economic development, and community enhancement? We got economic justice and historical impact. How important is economic justice and historical impact on a scale of one to five, with five being the highest? What is your awareness of? Uh, are you aware of past inequities? Ooh, we got a big four over there. You got one person voting so far. You got uh, Mr. Stokes. Stokes is okay. I mean, why y'all feel that? We talk about it too. What are, what are your thoughts about that question? What stands out for you the most about the the, the, the whole context of transportation? It looks like that environmental justice is big, and everybody is clear that the fact that the, the uh, past and equities uh, are clear must be addressed. Oh, so don't nobody think data matters? That's a joke, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I, I can't speak for him, mm -hmm. but but with, with that about the environmental justice and historical impacts, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mann, and that's one of the reasons that I, I, I get talked to him about coming today mm -hmm. is the historical impact that transportation has had on the area that he lives in. That was that was your cue, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you want me to speak on it. <laughs> well, in, in my neighborhood, you know, the road sort of came through my property. Mm -hmm. And we had a ditch that was on the end of our property. But when they came through and put the road, they moved the ditch to the opposite side of the road. Mm -hmm. So when I went out there and talked to the DOT guy that put the tile down, I said, hey, your tiles are so high, when the water got to raise up on us before it go through. Mm -hmm. He said, well, engineer designed this. I said, I'm calling engineer for common sense and tell you. In order for water to go through, there got to be a low point. Right. So the, I had the picture where Greenleaf that came by, because before they put the road through, I never had no problem. Mm -hmm. But now in my garage, I got put an eight foot mound every time I have a big rain, keep the water from going to my garage. Mm -hmm. But it meant nothing to them, yeah. you know. And my thing is, why come you couldn't leave us a ditch on our side of the road? Yeah. So that would help the sun. Yeah. But they just completely did away with our ditch and raised the tile so high. Mm -hmm. I got a few pictures here. 
so my, my, my brain picture that I had, I went to a meeting years ago with Greenleaf. Okay. And the main picture that I had, they asked to give to them because they're going to do something with it, but nothing been done about it. Well, I'm going to do the rest of That's what you, that's what we need recorded on here, here uh, part of that story. Because that's what, when, see, when you get the, we get the data out, now you have to package the information. That's a powerful packaging of information. And it relates to why we're actually doing this study. The reason Tanya Smith OC and OCR and others, they wanted to, to do this study, not just to recognize the past in equity, but such that DOT and planning in the future don't make the same mistake. Because that, uh, that's, that's what we call, uh, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's where the, the lack of respect for community comes in. So let's say for planning down the road like they're doing now for a cemetery <coughs> project. The reason we're trying to do the cemetery project we're involved in now, because they want to kind of make sure they don't make the same mistake. Where they're planning now for roads and stuff, they want to be able to identify before they go in where we have graves and all that kind of stuff because what we've seen from the 60 minutes and other stuff is going to save money down the road and have to go in and desecrate all these graves and everything and move them. So what you're talking about, that kind of information helps them. So now we're going to start talking with the DOT directors at the, at the county level and they're planning. This is the kind of stuff we can, these are actual examples of stuff that could have been awarded. And it's also an example of why the need for community input at the local offices. Because if we put report it there, we report here, and we report it there, our folks don't record and report this stuff. So they basically don't know that this is a good way of getting that information. Yes, ma'am. We were talking to a similar, um, I'm director of Carroll County Community Development Corporation, and in the Alligator community, when they were talking about why the highway, making it a four lane curve, mm -hmm. they were going to basically end up flooding out an entire alligator community. Mm -hmm. um, there were several meetings, and it got down to the point where, and I just happened to hear about a meeting one day. I hate to say this, but a certain race was at the meeting, and a whole section of other people had no idea about that the meeting was going on. Yeah. And so um, at this point, they're just doing the um, a bridge across the Alligator River um, across the Alligator River, but eventually they're going to come back and start outside of Columbia and meet up with that bridge. So we're going to come back again at some point, which I think is very soon, that we're going to have those same issues again. Because mm -hmm. people are going to be moved out, and as we see with what happened in Crystal, there's going to be water flooded into that community. And It'll be um, the third time DOT, when they do it again this time, the third time DOT will cut my family's property hmm. going across. Ooh. The third, it'll be the third time. Okay, can you put some of that story down on okay. that? Yeah, I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, 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 and you guys are here. And again, this is where the prep part comes. Getting people prepared to engage these things. So we can't get the stories out. So as long as I focus out, as long as we can't document these stories, it's another issue. It's business as usual. Yeah, and, and so I'm saying this helps, the data helps, and these sessions help for the longer term. So you mentioned something that's, that's intriguing. The fact there are 20, 30 year plans already out there. Our folk who's hosting it, they know nothing about it. So these meetings go on all the time. I've been on planning commissions and all this stuff. But, and most of the time, nobody in the room was in. I, know, I, I remember one of the biggest things that did was affected the 20 year plan, 30 year plan for um, Catawba County. I was the only one in the room, and I made sure that we had diversity. Don't you think this is in the 90s? Mm -hmm. Had diversity built into the actual summer report. I wrote that part of it, make sure I was the only white person, I mean only black person in the room on this whole committee, 20 some people. I'm the vice chair president at the Nora Ryan College. They ain't never dealt with no black PhD, so I wasn't gonna get pushed around. I knew what my role was. But this is I was every meeting. We'll get folks in place they don't go to meetings. 
you who don't have a voice if you don't show up. And that's what we're going to do here is enhance that voice. We have um, on the equity and focus policy side of it, yeah. um, we have issues right in our, our area where uh, water levels in some of these ditches are, are high because the water can't get to the Roanoke River in this instance because the Beaver dams are, mm -hmm. uh, are stopping the water flow. Um, you, you can't fool the Beaver Dam because the that the property owner says, I love beavers. It doesn't make any difference how it's impacting your land and the water water um, coming on you. Mm -hmm. and, and that unless you can negotiate some kind of sensible deal with the property owner. I think that from a policy perspective, that, that needs to change in, in some respect. Whereas if, if, if you love beavers and, and because of your love of your beavers is destroying my and, and that's happening on my property right now as we speak. And then you need to be able to um, be held accountable in some some way. Yeah. But I really think that um, on, on a policy level, it needs to be something legislatively incorporated, whereas um, we, we can fix this with this. Uh, it's just not me. It's, it's kind of common in Martin County. Huh. Let, me, let me also say, kind of speaking on this. Like I said, when the road came through, we have six acres of land across the road we can't get to. My neighbors next to me have 12 acres that they can't get to. Now, further down the road in the white section, what they done was they went on the opposite side of the road and they made a road down the side to Howard where they can get to their land. But in our neighborhood, like I said, our six acres can't get to, their 12 acres they can't get to. So it's just land sitting over there, you know. Okay. Yeah. I need, I need, I need to, to get that written up some kind of way for me, okay, to, in, in the neighborhood, because that's important data to, to go along with this, because again, we have to be able to tell stories, uh, you know, that, that's what capture people's uh, stories, to be able to capture, most, same thing here, with that we got to, that's actual stuff, now when we go in and start talking with these local uh, DOT directors who are heading up these projects and doing that, these are things that we have to be able to ask them. These are the things, once it's documented, it goes to uh, uh, the Office of Civil Rights Report, which then goes to the, the uh, what is it, the Governor's Committee on uh, Andrew Harris. Yeah. yeah, that's where the stuff has to get to, to now impact these folks at the local level. But it's, it's you remember I said inside out, outside in? That's what we're talking about. You're inside, now we're pushing this thing out, you say, okay, we got documentation, four or five stories right here in this region about water level and how uh, the work was done. And even when confronted or uh, challenged, they basically said we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. How do you deal with um, a DOT issue, but you have to deal with It's not made up, and you can't, you know, it's not, you can't just couch it in race. You can't just couch it in a lot of stuff, but you have to define it before you can come away with a solution. And part of defining is being very uh, accurate about the description, how long, and just paint the story. And we can, we can make the rest work. That's the main thing. Don't, you know, these folks sitting in these local boards and stuff, uh, uh, most of them have any contact. 
uh, with community that we're talking about at all. All right. We kind of been talking about that. What about redness? You know, one of the things on the, on, on, on the other end of the argument that we're talking about now is the fact that we just don't have folk ready to play. And we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's the other part of it. We don't, we don't have people prepared to play. We don't want to talk about it. And uh, we don't have people show up when they're supposed to. We have to follow up and follow up with people who are supposed to be doing certain tasks. You see what I'm saying? That has to, that's part of it has to change once we're more consistent, once we're more persistent at communicating and showing up and messaging. All of a sudden, it changes how people have to deal with you versus a shotgun thing here three months later, somebody say something, five months later, something, but nothing consistent on a consistent basis to challenge some of these things. And readiness in the African American community. What about readiness with Latino? Uh, Native American, Hawassaponi, American Indian, what about their readiness? And uh, women on business, they're ready. And see, the, the whole point is, I don't care how much money that comes down, if we're not ready and prepared to have organizations prepared to manage and to create opportunities, we don't even get access. We went into some of the cities to talk with some of the mayors. They got not one application, not one grant, not one application to do stuff targeted in the African American community. You know what I'm saying? Nobody took anything to the table. They said, this is what we want done. And this is how we do it. Here you have put it up. That money went everywhere. A lot of it went into what do you call them things? Uh, just uh, the show. Separating. Yeah, the show yeah. Away projects. Mm -hmm. When in fact we got all these mental health needs, you got educational needs, mm -hmm. you got family needs, and we got nobody going to city council, nobody going to county commission and putting this on the table in terms of human capital need. We got straight human capital need. But what he said is, well, you know, no problem. You just get ready by yourself. I ain't gonna pay you to get ready then for the compete with me. <laughs> uh, Y'all got that one, huh? Yeah, Why should I pay you to get ready to compete? <laughs> because it's participatory democracy. You have to deal with it. But if I don't go to the table, it don't exist. It may not be in my best interest to represent your interests. But it's just the reality <laughs> of democracy. But I thought we'll talk about it, but to show up at these meetings on a consistent basis, that's so important. And be able to take this kind of descriptive analogy in there. So most of these people had read this thing, they don't look at this. It's just tunnel vision. I don't, I don't see color, I don't see race. This is where you do it for people. No. It don't always happen that way. It sounds good, but when you start to look at the data, when you start to look at history, that's not how it happens. You're going to say, what, what Dr. Thomas, uh, what about organizations in Washington County with the uh, uh, infrastructure money? Mm -hmm. the, the, the county commissioners had decided what they were going to do with that money. We're not talking. So we, we went in, and the manager tried to tell us, you know, we're going to do this. We asked. Did you have any community needs? That's right. And I, I had the document, and I, it, in line in the document was that you're supposed to have community needs. And um, he said, no, we didn't, we didn't do that. And unfortunately, our county commissioner board is majority us, Washington. And it's you know, and I've got one. He said something to him, man. You don't, you don't want to. Uh, they, they, when you present stuff like that to them, they get defensive. Yeah, they get uncomfortable. And and so so, I'm somewhat of an, of an outcast and an agitator. Mm -hmm. That um, uh, sometimes now I, I just throw my hands up and say, you know what, if, if other people don't get involved, I'm, I'm, it's because you lose friendships. Mm. Yeah. You lose friendships. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, see, you into a whole other ballgame now. You into that old psychology of black experience thing. So we got people that look like us that supposedly represent our interests, but they don't represent our interests. And what culture say, you don't put your dirty laundry out there. Mm -hmm. That's the dilemma psychologically. So we did people just float doing the same thing over and over with no change. 
and we don't have the public dialogue because your grandmother told you, you don't act like that in public with your people. Now, yeah, you're laughing. This is in the back of our heads about how we deal with what we think is leadership. So they get a free ride, just keep doing what they do. I've seen some folks down here got uh, electors chairing the board. I've been in the room where they all look like us. I've been in the room where they all look like us, and half of them sleep during the meeting. Or never bring up issues. Good laughing, because you know we did this years ago. We were observing. You were on the team, had my PhD students in there. We were observing these people. We had health departments of uh, people. Anytime dollars came up most, sister didn't show up for the meeting. Yeah. Anytime the dollar changes policy, didn't show up for the meeting. So we have to find out how to help hold our own folks accountable. We have folks that are in leadership position based on a lot of different things. But I think we have to reshape how we plan and get people moving. There has to be some consistency, persistence. There's going to have to be ways to bring some of that young blood in and get them trained early on doing this. And you got to move some of the old heads out the way who are just sitting there taking up space. And I, I say that from the point of view, yes, you have served and served well, but the context right now is critical. With all this money coming through, and we have no voice at the table. And then when you go to one of them to be your voice, they get defensive. But you can't, you can't do that. Or when you, when you foster, uh, when you're engaging in the community, then I've had situations where I have been harassed by our sheriff's department, yeah. highway yeah. patrol, got yeah. your tickets, tires have been slashed, yeah. life threatened just because I want an equal playing field. Right. You know, people don't, people don't realize that though. We don't talk about that stuff publicly. I went through stuff in Hickory like that, right? Um, you know, uh, with, with the city and the other folks. One of them said, you know, we like you and really like your work, but you just, uh, you have too much influence on people. It's dangerous. Can you believe somebody actually said that in, in the 90s, 98, 96, 98? Again in 2000 or something? No, he's been up there with me. It's, it's crazy. But that's the reality, and that's why we engage. That's why we keep moving. I have a, I have a similar lesson. To Greenleaf, my neighborhood, we raised $2 million. Mm -hmm. The Pope and David did the job in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So when the money was spent, I happened to go through one meeting. They said, well, we spent $30,000 in Macedonia. That's where I live. So I'm like, if you spend it, where you spend it at? I'm, I live there and I can see it. Oh, we went back to so and so and so. And this is kind of commission talk. Yeah. I said, like, you know, that's not Macedonia. That's not Macedonia. So, what he done, because I went to a lot of meetings by myself, raising the sand, they sent six Mexicans and a white boy. They did it in front of my house inside. They dug them up with shells. And I told look, the thing wasn't to please me, it was to please the community. But they think, well, if I shut him up, yeah. I got to make it. Yeah. See, that's the struggle yeah. we, we, we getting done. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to the, just the community organizers and get together and just make sure that people understand how we have to engage these systems and sort of keep it going. I mean, when you start talking about economics, you start talking about land, when you start talking about this power. Yeah, I mean, it's power. I thought we may go up more on emotion and go going to do the right thing, but it's bigger and it ain't just based on right now. That piece you're talking about right now, it might not have a significance for them as for you right now. The significance for them is 10 years from now, mm -hmm. where the move that was made here sets up what they know is coming in 10 years. Okay? Tom. Yes, sir. I just want to add, um, um, he touched on it, though. When uh, Mr. Stokes were talking about being the only one in the room, yeah, I'm 61 years old. I know I don't look like it, but I was one of the few in Edgecombe County. Okay. Um, I went to all the school board meetings, all the county commissioner meetings, and was recording back in the 90s. I started mm -hmm. recording back in the 90s, so when the pandemic came out, they had to come up to where I was. Yeah. But I always said that just because I'm the only one, if I say it, I don't know how the law is going to move them. And then it's documented in the minutes. Yeah. So when it come back around, I can say, well, I told y'all, yeah. you know, so you got to say it. Yeah. And, and and like the lady said, I've been threatened and all that kind of stuff to worried my mama to death. I mean, to death, yeah. you know, but but we got to do it. We got to be that voice. 
and 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 when you hear here, I've been to a whole lot of meetings. Means more about nothing. Just yeah. like the day. Yeah. I'm to a meeting that's about something, so I'm getting the resources I need. Yeah. It's about resources. Yeah. You gotta yeah. know people. I know people across the state. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's all about. I was late getting here, but I was trying to get because I went to sheriff this morning doing some stuff. But mm -hmm. um, it's about resources. Well, we appreciate resource and, and access. All right, right. Access. Mm -hmm. Well, resources, access, and readiness. All those things are important. Okay, describe your reading experience. Let's talk about this one for a minute. So, uh, describe your county reading experience with NCDOT historically and currently uh, in general and specifically for black, brown, and underserved communities. What is your, what has been your experience, and we've heard some of those already with DOT, uh, 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 historically and currently. I think we've heard kind of two or three or four stories. And anything else you want to kind of add to that? We feel unseen, not listened to. Hmm. Uh, I know the other thing, uh, what's it? Illusion of progress. And depending on where you are, or the western part of the state, or this part of the state, what is you know, what is the illusion of progress for black folks? Where uh, sometimes we think you got more elected officials, black elected officials, da, da, da. is that real? Is the illusion how effective are they? What has the track record said? What have they done that we can see impact by zip code or impact by you know? What, have you, what do you know about? How many decisions are uh, proposed to put on the table for this or that? A lot of times we went in and observed, uh, we found they were non existent. They were not putting stuff on the table. This is where community comes in again. Other thoughts? That, that's why. And, and I have learned you work with what you have, mm -hmm. but that you were able to get this data. And transportation is something that I never thought about or even worry about. And nobody's come to me and said, <laughs> you know, you think this is something that you need, but that you're going to be able to collect this data. And I know today it's not many, but to be able to collect this data and, and take it and do something about it. Yeah. And bring it back to educate our people. That's the thing that community engagement has to be mutually beneficial and reciprocal. Mm -hmm. And the reciprocal part is us bringing the data back and getting you and other folks to understand this is what this means. That's how you start the education process. See, sometimes when you're writing a report, it's the, you take that right there, put quotes in front of black and on the voice, and have it right in the middle of, of a, a narrative. It's like, bam, just right out that just says everything. It's that one little quote right there. And it's not just, it's not just Washington County. No, no, you know. no. no. Is you take the 23 counties, yeah. Yeah. that is probably from the most pr prosperous county and, 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 and you know, innovative. And the rest of us are, are in the same boat, a lot in the 23 counties. Mm -hmm. This is what I, uh, I've been arguing for. I think a regional type of collaborative, you got to get folks together when you get enough people different counties to come together and put together a plan you need to. You can't do it individually, but if you got a regional impact, uh, for instance, uh, we were looking at uh, Appalachia region yep. for stuff in Western North, West North Carolina. They ended up being about, what, four or five counties, about two or three counties, yeah, three or three counties, five or six cities, and it was like the map thing went like that, and you put all those people together and have a regional collaborative. Where now you deal with four or five or six counties where you have to go after funds to deal with uh, the energy piece, to deal with workforce development. You see, that's where this is going. This data will help set all that up. That's, just what's called. That, that, that's what I like about it because, like in my county, maybe one or two people, but if other counties, like you said, make it regional, 
Mm-hmm. That's what I've been talking about for years. When we all come together, yeah, yeah, we can make know, things happen. You're right. And see, the thing about that, but down the road, mm-hmm. say it's been like this, you can have the thing going on in three or four counties at the same time with the same. That's where you start having a regional impact instead of just that one thing here, one thing there. You get ready to show me. I'm trying to find it. It's, uh, oh, okay. Uh, well, while we're doing that, you take one yeah, I'll come back to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll come back. All right, so what are, what are some other thoughts? Any, any, anything else you want to share? And look, while we're doing this topic, please write this stuff down on the front, back, on the page so we can get, get these stories down, okay? All right. What's next? Okay, let's do this one then. What do you think the primary strengths and weaknesses are of um, your community? We can go with the weaknesses first. Um, you don't mind? Um, yeah. Too much. It was too much, and continue to be too much of an exodus of our young talent. Mm. Um, yeah. Everything um, for the last forty years, we educate them, and they go um, from, from Raleigh and beyond. Yeah. Uh, um, and and and, and, it's, and and it's it's hurting us now. When you, I was sitting here thinking. In terms of capacity, if we had every everything in place in terms of um, uh, being able to, uh, we know we don't have electricians, but we don't have teachers, we don't have um, any of the disciplines that's necessary that, that we think is necessary to, to forge us well into the future. Yeah. Um, our grandkids are, are not here. What, what you what you have in all this region is a retirement community, in essence. Dr. Tom's served on my visitation committee, which was on the um, out migration from Black Hills, North Carolina, just exactly what you're talking about. Exactly what you're talking about. I worried about it. Zach Hawkins grew up in Chaco Whitney. What, what county is that in? Both. He grew up in, he is a House of Representatives member in Durham, representing Durham. Think about that. Um, and there's a lot more. Dan Bloom, from, uh, minority leader for the Senate from Robeson County. Robeson County. From where I am. Yeah, you know what I mean? So you're absolutely right. If we had that talent here, you know, in addition to what we already have. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I know all those folks. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know exactly what's wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, coming out of college. But, um, but that's the thing, though. For me, though, that's, that's one part of it. But what are we doing as older people now uh, to get these young folks involved? I don't see, you know, things that our forefathers did back in the day uh, are trying to get us to where we are. Are we really moving forward? I mean, are, are we doing what we need to do? Yeah. Because they do what they see us to do. Yeah. And, and I don't think we're doing enough. Yeah. I really don't. Um. We have enough kids to attend that table, but not going to be able to meet those needs. And our young people, they want to stay in the region, they go to Fifth County because they can get all the services that they need. Mm. Still call themselves in Eastern North Carolina. Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fabulous. So this going to be there's going to be a huge amount of turnover. We need because um, in five years, the last set of baby boomers will turn 65 years old. Oh, my goodness. Um, and I'm sure you all have, tsunami. I'm sure you all have raised this issue before, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah have there been any, any, uh, any talk of uh, solutions, policy solutions, investments? Uh, because I think I think the idea, you know, from an outsider, um, so take a grain of salt. Like, would is what's the what have been sort of the conversations around um, keeping that out migration from happening, keeping the young folk here? Have there been any ideas? I'm just curious. Yeah, it has been um, one aspect. We've been trying to bring 
the hemp industry, the mm. emerging hemp industry in eastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They've been at it for since 2018. Mm -hmm. Right now we're focusing on, on fiber hemp. Everything you see in this room can be made out of hemp. Really? Um, so so we, 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 we're trying to focus on, 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 on bringing careers as well as jobs. Sure. Or PhDs, or whatever it's going to take to, to make that happen. So it's on. Um, it's not widespread. We're trying to get the farmers to um, transition from peanut to cotton, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they gave us a, a, a goal of um, if, if you can show us how we can get 500 bucks per acre net, then then, then we will consider. So um, we've been working with with um, venture capitalist folks uh, to try to. Uh, we think we got a bumper crop in in the field right now to be able to demonstrate to them. And that's a um, possibility. So, but but then it's again again it's um, condensing the farmers. Um, it's, it's it's hard to get somebody. Farming is a gamble anyway. Yes. And and, and to be able to tell somebody to go out on um, on, on faith, yeah. um, you got to really show them some real numbers. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. Create a, a template that they. I guess <coughs> that's just one. Uh, we really believe that that that, that him. Revolutionize Eastern North Carolina. What do you need for help? To me, uh, just to, uh, just from a biological perspective, what, what, like, what, if the federal government can invest money into uh, the Black Belt region, like they do in Appalachia, what, what, what would help farmers? What we, we need an ability to to um, look at the machineries, um, both on small acreage and large acreage, um, because it's, it's a difference. It's no need to have a a, a five hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment to harvest it if you can't get that get down this lane where the field is. That's right. So, so we're looking at different sizes of um. We need seeds. Uh, we we're using seed right now from Australia. We need to create our own seeds. Yeah. We tried seed last year from China and France, and they bombed up. It didn't work. It didn't work, but it looks good for what we got. So we've um. um from, we're trying to define and, and understand what we need. Um, 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 too much water, too mm -hmm. little water impacts you. So if you have the ability to irrigate, you can you can really uh, stabilize things. And, and some of these farmers have irrigation capabilities for whatever they're planting now. So um, um, in, in terms of USDA, you know, um, um, we need we need all of it, mm -hmm. whatever subsidies, mm -hmm. big time, just like to give them peanuts and, yeah. and everything else. Um, <coughs> That for him, and, and, and of course the benefits are you purifying the air. Sure, yeah, more more carbon, um, um, you know, carbon capture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I can tell you what's coming, and that's a lot of renewable energy. Is there uh, is there any idea um, to have have black farmers been approached? On the concept of uh, agrivoltaic, so being able to use your land for stacking purposes for both uh, producing electricity and uh, having pollinators and other things. I'm not sure, I have, I have zero information, uh, understanding around hemp, but um, would the two be able to coexist? Is it something that needs, you know, uh, sunlight all the time? I, I, just, I just, I know trillions of dollars are going to flow over the next couple of decades in, in that space. And, if you have wide open spaces, um, you know, it, it makes sense to at least take a look crap, take a look at it. Um, you talking solar panels and the like? Yeah, but stacking it, not just um, not just the solar panels, but solar panels. So I went to a, a workshop in, in um, Chicago, and there were a lot of farmers there who understand this money is coming down the pipe. Uh, not a lot of farmers like us, uh, but one of the last panels was talking about um, how it could work for, how it could work for farmers of color. And so, yeah, I just wonder, um, and, then, and then we're also hearing that certain developments happening with certain farmers and not other farmers. So I'm just wondering, you have you been, have you encountered that? And is that something that's worth exploring? Well, it's, um the conversation has happened. 
when, when hemp came about, uh, we heard about it four years after some of the farmers were playing around with it. Mm -hmm. okay. There's always, um, um, if, if someone who has our best interests is at the table, they seem to get mute when they leave the table. Uh, oh, okay. So, so it's, it's um, but, but we need the kind of forum and, and, and uh, information outflow um, that, that would entice um, sure. um, some of our young people, um, because that's what we're looking for. Um, I, I express my my opinion at, at, with the legislators over med medical marijuana and the, the whole issue with hemp or anything related to the cannabis plant. But we, for, for us to be able to uh, retain the talent yeah. or bring the talent in, yeah. whatever they're doing right now, we need to be able to, to make sure that they don't lose their, their livelihood for at least five years That's right. um, so while, while we build this. While we're building that infrastructure. Yeah. Let's continue to talk. Um, I think there's lots of opportunities. I don't want to. Uh, there's lots of opportunities here. And, and, um, Dr. Martin, can you get, we, can you get um, a group that is not strong to go online and complete this? We need that. We need to get them, they just to say it in there. The more specificity, you know, mm -hmm. <coughs> certain things like you just pointed out, that your point, that concept, that's what we are able to do. Okay, come in. Okay, let's say you have white people stand up here. You ain't getting all this. This is it. I mean, there's no other way to say that's the beauty that we bring in because not only do we we can get it interpreted from even our own experience and know what it means, then you're able to connect it with the national piece here on solar and energy. Then you can connect it over here, you know, with the grant stuff that are coming out. Mm -hmm. so, so you see, to get four or five, two, three, four or five minutes, mm -hmm. go online if you like, even take this and give it to them and send it back. Either way, we need the information. Same here. You got to get what you were talking about now. Because ain't nothing going to happen if nobody know about it. We can put it in place with say, bam, it's right there on the screen. And then we, we talk, we can, we'll present the examples to Director of Office, Office of Civil Rights. We'll present the example to uh, uh, the Deputy Director, uh, Director of NCDOT, yeah. Ebony. Ebony. Ebony Pittman. Yeah. So it's not like we got access, you know? Let, let me mention, uh, with respect to uh, opportunities that uh, Tanya Smith mentioned at the more re a recent uh, conference in uh, Pinehurst. Two things coming down the pipe for transportation, EV stations. Yes. EV stations is going to be a big piece. And drones. Yes. Drones will be uh, one of the uh, new pieces as well. So just wanted to share those two uh, points of opportunities as well. EV Hopefully stations. we'll get more information. EV stations and for entrepreneurs. So yes. I, I, I have a, like I said, I have an EV out there. I'm going to have to stop when I get, I'm going to. Yeah. I, oh, great. I, I, okay, I, I, uh, most folks have one. We're we about to, we kind of about to end up. We might be going to get today, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's on, on a Saturday, but uh, um, let's see. We have a question about um, um, needs of, of community as relates to transportation. Mm -hmm. I think we got a lot of that. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you, the folks that remain, go back. What are the primary needs of community as it relates to transportation? You think we got a lot of it? You got some more you want to add to that? We got some pretty good dialogue. You know, other thing is we're gonna you can go online and complete this too. We really need all the information you can get. Let's look at the next one, Mom. Yes, sir. Okay. Are there three action steps that NCDOT or Office of Civil Rights can take that will impact transportation, economic development, and quality of life? All right. All right. Well, I, I have one um, that's really disgusting to me. Um, speed zones. <laughs> um, you, you, you come out of yeah. you, you come out of uh, Bertie County, 
cross over the Sharon River around Eaton, you're 70 miles an hour speed limit. Yes, sir. Um, then you get into an area, it drops down to 55 miles zone, and and and, and to me, it's no real rationale. It's just a speed trap, mm -hmm. uh, and and most of the folks, uh, uh, the local folks, shouldn't get burdened with that because they should be aware of it, but. Um, Certainly, any 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 newcomers traveling through the area uh, uh, will get hit. A few family members from wherever been been burned, but um, the, 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 to, to me, and it's the same thing um, uh, from from Bethel to to Greenville. It's, it's four lanes, two lanes on, on in, in either direction. Um, Fifty-five mile an hour. Even if this is bumping up five miles per hour, but it's um. That's 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 my thing. Um, uh, of course, you see it on 495 um, going into Baltimore around Washington, yes. uh, and everybody running 85 miles an hour, but it's no 55 way. miles. Like low speed. In 85. So it's one of those things that um, and and, and what what really the problem is that in, in my view for for the for the Person who believe that when you're breaking the speed, you're sinning. And I've talked to some folks, uh, you know, they say that's a sin. Um, uh, the difference in speed between the vehicles creates more of a problem than if you were to um, take the speed limit up to. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. Anything else? I think we've covered most of it. And then, like I said, I would love to uh, make sure you go on, go on and, and uh, also complete. Um, the piece online, okay? And uh, let's go around right quick. Um, let's do this. I think we got through all of them. Let's go around and do this. Well, yeah. Primary name. The last one was what? What is your vision? Of transportation and region is impact. And then obviously, if you want, uh, if you want to follow up. And that's what we plan to do from a community uh, loop, feedback loop. Put this together, and we'll come back and find ways either through uh, uh, what do you call them things, gifts or through uh, yeah, uh, sure. infographics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other way to come back and tell you this is what we found out. Okay, that way, making sure we put the information back in the community. And I guess the last one is asking, do you want to uh, uh, follow up information via email from Instagram? Well, let's go around. Um, you can continue writing if you're still feeling out, but just want to ask you to do this little exercise. Today I have learned, or right now I'm feeling, and it's kind of called a close out. So today I have learned, or right now I am feeling. Start with you. Yes, sir. Today I have learned, or right now I'm feeling about how the session went. Well, I've learned um, talking about situations um, and the attempt to balance it. That we, we normally don't have the opportunity to mm -hmm. yeah. and immediately. Yeah. That's good. Yes, sir. Well, I've learned as I've told out that, you know, we just have to find the right resources to get into it. Mm -hmm. And I sort of feel like today you seem like other people care about you. Yeah. So sometimes when you're down, you feel like nobody cares about you. You got to by yourself. Yeah. So, you know, with this, this program seems like it's, it's good information. You know how to reach out there for help. Mm, that's good. That's good. Yes, sir. Yeah, I learned that there are opportunities available. Yeah. But the problem is knowing how to go about reaching, getting opportunities. Yeah. Right. Most today I've learned right now too. Uh, I've, I've learned that, that that a lot of a lot of growing needs to be done. A lot of uh, planning needs to uh, uh, need to occur that we can prepare um, for, for other discipline, um, electrical field, for instance. Um, but then I also um, 
feel that, that uh, a process has to be followed and, 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 and that template used to be able to get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Good. Today I have learned that it's good to be back home. Hey. <laughs> All right. Today I learned, or right now I'm feeling. Right now I'm feeling that I arrived too late to, to <laughs> get any information out of this session, and I apologize. Uh, that's okay. We're glad you came. You can still uh, go online also and complete the survey. We really need to get the information back for everybody. So, did you fill it out? Uh, Okay, but if you can go online and do that, that that that'll be helpful. Yes, sir. Today I learned. Right now, I'm feeling. Mm, well, what I like about being in the room with good folk, I'm learning good stuff. I mean, I love it. I love it. Okay. Cool. And to be able to share it with my followers. Okay, cool. Are you gonna share it with us so we can get right? Well, I'm doing it live. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I right. learned that. My bad. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. uh, today I learned that there, there's a lot of opportunities out there that we just need to come together and let other people know about. Yeah. 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 Big time. Big time. All right. Ramon. Uh, yeah, right now I'm feeling like I kind of want to follow up with, this, with a lot of you all and hopefully can get your stories uh, via yeah. Zoom. And I can, we can just yeah. schedule Zoom um, meetings and record them. And that way we can have one on one interviews. So um, we'd love to follow up with you all. So you hear you what you say. So Mo, if we can help coordinate like a Zoom meeting uh, with the system and we can get folk on and we can record it then that way we got like recordings, like little brief recording of these stories. That's right. You see, because part of this uh, part of this is uh, 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 this process is the recording of community voices and stories. So not only we'll get the survey people. But get people to tell get your story, your story, and other about the impact of transportation. That'd be powerful. So we'll look out and get money to help set. Up. We were actually trying to plan to do some of that today, having the space that things kind of got out of, you know, uh, time call it with us. This this couldn't do it. But um, so you uh, you pretty much got good. So I'd love to get uh, get a copy of that so we can go through. Probably do and you know can even get some of the. Um, the translation to make sure that we got the next time we do something like this, we'll have the smaller table and put something in where we actually kind of record it. And then that way it'll be much easier to translate, edit, and then do that. But I want to, today I learned it right now I'm feeling with your mouth full. <laughs> I, I, I caught baby when she just put stuff in the pot. Yeah. So um, today I learned a right now I'm feeling. I'm going to come back. Today I learned right now too that although I'm 60 years old, I'm older and engage the young people and trying to energize some energy with them to do this work because I don't want to do it at 20 years. I'm sad you still doing that. I love it too. It's still it's still it's still it's still vacation. Yeah, that helps too. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, synergy and energy. That's it. So that's what we have to figure out. How do you create spaces for synergy and energy that we go into? When you I go into space, that's the main thing I see all the time, just in the community, just the lack of synergy. Uh, synergy and energy is the fuel for change. And we got some dead communities in our mm -hmm. right now. We have to figure out how to fire it up. All right, Miss Betty. Okay, Miss Betty, we'll, um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Social security number, Miss Betty. Thank you. 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 And I feel like um, we need to uh, uh, get very active in the manifestation be of this. Yeah, <laughs> and it's the right time. Yeah. You see, now that it's out there, we're doing this. 
and then knowing what to ask for is who you can like where to go at this level at another level so yep that's exactly what we need to do cool all right y'all really hook uh just one other uh, point i'd like to add to what i have learned how i'm feeling and that is gratitude mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and to express our appreciation for the opportunity to you know to come in and share uh, important information and I think uh, East North, North Carolina uh, Civic Group should be commended for your legacy, for your track record of bringing, you know, communities together uh, for the benefit of the people. So, uh, I, we express our gratitude. I would like one more thing. And I would have a lot of substance abuse. You have a lot of substance abuse. If your substance is going away, please wait, please. Oh, good. I don't care. Oh, okay. Then they both read in like the 10 minutes. Okay. All right, cool. Dr. Stokes, I want to ask okay. you, um, I'm going to mean and about more men than it is women, because the women get it done. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so saying true. to people with some men folks. <laughs> so true. But uh, also, you know um, Ruben Blackwell, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. right, because you're on the show not long ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, that, that's who I hang out with. I live in Tire Top. They live in okay. yeah, they they my city council, yeah. right? Yeah. But I've right. I've been I was calling them meetings before. Actually, I go. To, I'm the longest person going to the meetings before they got up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other than the attorney, he just retired. Though, so I've been going to him like 40 years. Yeah. And stuff. So uh, yeah, well, I, I told him you were coming you remember, down. Yeah, you remember, yeah. I mean, I came down and did a whole lot of work with. Uh, right. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Right. 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 Trouble. Oh, yeah. You know, and that turned that turned it that turned it all around. That's right. So that's why I say we got a whole lot of history uh, yeah. uh, uh, down here in this area. Hey, Mon, do you want to? Uh, hey, won't you? Can you can you pull up uh, our boys, uh, the mayors? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Want you want to see oh, yeah, what yeah, we've yeah. done from a street stories point of view and how we're able to capture? We got the mayor of uh, Inland, All right? Infield. Yeah, Infield. And Halifax, Halifax, Halifax County. County. Halifax County. And Dern, you got one in Durham, right? Huh? Y'all got an office in Durham. Yeah, we got all. Awesome. Where, where is it? Oh, uh, Meridian Parkway. Meridian Parkway. The reason I asked because my daughter lives right across the street in the those uh, apartments. So yeah. Beside yeah. the hotel, I see at the hotel right there when I go visit oh. her. Well, like I got to go there tomorrow and pick up my wife because she went up there with a Tuesday. Yeah. Well, and, you know that's just that's where often then the other spaces in uh, in Shelby. Okay. Where I'm, I just moved back to my hometown probably about a year and a half or so ago. Okay. And that's where often there. Then you got uh, Tanya and Dace. You got the uh, CFO, COO uh, in, in Durham. Yeah. In, in Durham here. Uh, and then we got consultants like, like Mon. Mon was one of the original people that we did a study called The Guide. We went in and looked at data from 20 wow. counties that the, the highest with the 20 counties with the highest African American population and the highest percentage of African American. And we looked at it in relationship to historically underutilized business. The school systems, community colleges, and universities, did they meet the 10% guideline? We got counties like down here where it was 60, 50, 60, 60%. And let's say 10 million came in and something like 2.1%, let's just throw it out. Went to black businesses. Yeah, I mean, hey, hey Mo, if you remember, I think the first presentation that your class made, Doc, was at our conference our, at, right. at A and T, and folks were in denial. Oh, yeah. that, and uh, then the other one, remember we came to Rocky Mountain? Yeah, yes. Represented yeah. these black elected officials got upset with me and my students. I said, you need to tell me. I said, you gonna say because we black, we can't do better now? No, that's not what you said. That's what you said. <laughs> And these were black elected officials. Because not, not wanting to be challenged on their own stuff. Think about it. Mm -hmm. We're criticizing them the fact that in the room, this money is being spent, you got the highest population, and you're not represented. They ain't we didn't say it that way, but that's what the data was saying. They, they didn't like it. But it's accountability. We don't know what it's accountability. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all about accountability. Oh, there it is. This is, a, the, this is an example of what we put together to DOT to tell them what we're doing coming in here. It's the powerful, but it's also stuff we can come back and present um, um, later. It's on now. Um, Should have his face on. Keep going. Yeah, there it is. That's the mayor of 
One of the towns that is majority black in this country that was and is a victim of one of America's federal government most substantial uh, infrastructure investment. What I'm talking about, what I'm referring to, is the national highway system and how it destroyed the economy of many black towns across this country. But in this case, specifically, we're talking about how Enfield, North Carolina, is forever the worst off because of what Highway 95 did in the mid-50s. When the government created the highway system, intentionally some of the designs created a new form of Jim Crow that would lock black people in downtrodden communities and further hurt them by ensuring that there were no economy built around those highways. Enfield is just one of those places. Our government invested so much money to ensure that the people of Enfield would not have an economy. Before 1950s, when I-95 opened up, five miles away from my town, the closest exit is, what happened was it took away all of the business, all of the transportation uh, needs that used to flow from Highway 301 from north to south, which runs through the middle of my town. And without all of those eyes, without all of those cars having to drive through my town, we no longer have industry. The federal government did nothing and does nothing to compensate for the harm it caused to my community and the many other black communities that suffered because of this great investment in the highway system. There's been no studies at the federal level to address or document the harm caused by the highway system that so many brag about. The true and right thing to do is to acknowledge that Enfield, one of the poorest, the eighth poorest city in the United States, is a byproduct of Americans' policies, and in this case, the federal highway system. Again, I am Wendell Robinson. I am the mayor of a town that is a victim of our national highway infrastructure. So this is part of a presentation that we presented to the NCBOT Office of Civil Rights. In the community, yeah. So, you see the story, huh? But that could be the same thing about Princeville when they put yeah. people through there. That's how come they really flew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is 95 right here. Yeah. And this is where 301 is and where Edith Moore Street would get filled. So, you can imagine diverting all this traffic over here and how it has an impact on, on the building. You can sort of see these tracks here, and you can see where the poverty rate is concentrated from here. and uh, so you have 37% poverty. 37.1. Now, the national average in the North Carolina average is 13. Wow. That's one of the highest in the state now. Yep. yep. No, I mean, we, uh, when, we look, we look, when we did the thing in Hickory, we go up to uh, Hickory where I lived before, you got tracks where the, the tracks in there were they're three times higher than the state. Mm -hmm level of uh, work in terms of poverty, those kinds of things. This is why data and stuff is so important. And we watched, the, uh, they were trying to, this is a group that was trying to go after housing authority and, and smear it and all that. And they said they got thousands of calls and all that stuff. So we went in and mom went in and went around and said, okay, let's look at those, let's look at the why of the what of the number. You start to look at poverty, you start to look at all these other indicators, and all of a sudden, you got this concentrated area where black folk are, where everything is elevated two or three times in the state. And uh, it, it freaked them out. They had to back up. They were trying to call HUD to, to shut down the nonprofit run by saying, I'm on, I'm on that board. And they were totally wrong. And once I heard that, we went into attack mode. Data. You didn't have no data. And then what they found out, out of 6,000 calls, they said he got, what, two, three years? Two years. Three years, 6,150 calls. Turns out, what? I mean, 300 and something for one woman. Well, <laughs> actually, 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 but 1,100 actually. 1,100, that's right. And then 300 was from the same one system. And they did not disaggregate that. So right. you look at the 6,000, they're like, these people are messed up. No, it's actually 1,100, even the 1,100. And then of the other parts of it, what? They were officers going by. See somebody on the street and note it and write it up. 
Right. This is why data is important, y'all. You know, just a thought to think about when you think about reality. Our youth get a felony and they can't get a job. Yep. Yeah. We are the man running for the leader of your country, yeah. 35, yeah. and he can get a job. <laughs> That's what's killing our black, a lot of our black kids, because they don't got a felony. Even though yeah. he likes all these program money out there, it don't, it no good to them. And that's the kind of thing that I think has to be worked through if you got community. Those are the kind of roadblocks that we can put on the table. Those are, well, that's what you're talking about. That's the equity and policy. And see, we don't always get to policy discussions. There's a tendency sometimes for our folks to go in these settings, and it comes over as like we're overly emotional and da 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 da. That's why we go in, data takes all of that out. Now, the emotion is still there, but you just don't call it emotion. Now it's emotion, your reaction to the data That's right. that you didn't know and see, that you've had some misgivings about, and you miseducated people because it was, sometimes you know that and do it intentionally. But to educate the community is holding the bargain to go in. And see, that, 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 right, that point right here, it goes back to the earlier research we did. Um, we created uh, the Community Empowerment Network that was down east. Ended up being about what? We started out with five or six, seven churches. It grew to 15, then it grew to something like 40 churches across 15 counties. Uh, remember Dr. Calvin Ellison? Oasis, yeah, we, we have started that whole thing down there. So that's the power of this data and stuff. But then where we made the conceptual error with that was, and I tried to tell him this, this is uh, during Obama's piece when he was running, Office of Minority Health, I helped create the uh, cultural diversity model for that thing back in the 90s. So now Office of Minority Health was funding health, church-related health centers. So within that, you had all this community engagement that was going on, people involved. We would be down there, sometimes we'd have 100 people showing up on Saturday. We had 60, 70 people drive uh, hours to get to a t for a 9 o'clock meeting that morning. And then to get the training. And that's how we would create the community empowerment network. I showed up too? Yeah, Hook was there Hook all the time. Hook showed up. That's how we all got started with this stuff. And ultimately, it turned into some very active things. The conceptual error that was made, at least on my part, I tried to tell them then, was the fact that no black organization has sponsored any politically form, for, political form for county commissioners, and all that kind of stuff. And when, uh, uh, um, CN, uh, Community Empowerment Network, who went and did that? Ellison wanted me to facilitate this thing with all the county commission stuff. It was front page. Uh, right after the elections, probably by the spring of that next year, they were already attacked. To the point they were shut down within a year. Yep. And I was trying to help, got too far out there with that political. It's one thing to be the only black organization to sponsor political debate, but what it did, it put you out there and you became a target. And the target was to go after the Office of Minority Health, cut the funding off at the neck for all of these different churches that were getting the money. For, remember, we had the health clinics in churches, all this stuff that was going on. And that's when they got, they went and attacked Barbara Fuller Smith, got her out of the office, and then she created the Office of Minority Health, and it cut all the funding in all of those churches. And the word was, at least what I heard, the, they said that the the fact that we were um, we were acquiring too much influence. Okay? And that's part of participatory markets again, y'all. It's how it's played. It's um Ronnie just brought up an issue but the, the felonies and then how it impacts it almost seemed like um, fifty percent of our youth um, have felonies. Yeah. It, it falls um and, and it's the district, your local district attorney, to bring the charges on. Yeah. So, so, so as a, so as a pack, on on a ground root level, we we got to be able to to, well, you try to you try to clean your own kitchen by making sure the kids. But we all made mistakes. Yeah. Um, and 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 their mistakes seem to be lifelong mistakes. Right. I mean, it, it really it really happens them all. But I do know that 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 there there have been situations where we've gone to our I'm talking about Seth Edwards, our, our district attorney, 
and, and, and we're able to, to, to mitigate and, and, and reduce some of the potential charges some of these teenagers are going to be dealing with. But, but now, the only point I want to make is that, uh, first of all, we're trying to get uh, your former mayor charged as I mean, taken off the books. You understand? I mean, we asked Governor Cooper to, before you leave office, to clean his. It's crazy, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was railroad. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, but we got to do that. Um, these folks are looking at, at 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 dollars. If you don't have dollars, and I'm talking all these all these candidates, but we got to we got to um, show them that if we don't give you a penny, we can impact fifty thousand votes. Yeah. You, we we got to we got to we got to change that whole. Because all they're looking at, all they're looking at is dollars. So it's um. um but a lot of our young people that um get charges and then they get post release and stuff. The probation guys they don't explain to them what's parole terms and and they violate them, they revoke them, then they go back to prison to serve the time that they don't that. They don't, they didn't know. One of the programs that Pearl County Community Development Board is doing right now is we are doing uh, record of appointments, like, like we just got two that I know of. I am waiting on a legal aid to let me know how many more, but we've had about, gosh, 50 applications from Pearl High, Washington, Pitt, and about five six counties that we're doing record punishment in right now. And when I spoke, and this was a four-year journey. I started on this before COVID, or right during COVID, and I called Mr. Seth Edwards and was asking for his support. He asked me, what did I, why did I want to do it? Wow. <laughs> and I said, because it needs to be done. They're not going to go to you. You're not going to do it. <clears throat> And so we were able to work with um, Pitt County Legal Aid, and so we are getting people appointed. But because you only get one time at it, so you got to make sure you get everything in that one swipe. You don't get a second time. This is interesting. I, I, I think that what at the very core of this, um, you say that Mr. Matthews, that everyone makes mistakes. Everyone was. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, and you have mutual indiscretions. What we have in this country is a um, imbalance in the way that justice and who gets caught and who gets punished. Uh, I think at, at a very core level, one thing we can try to try, way frame this narrative is that of this law and order critique that's failed America for the last 40 years is how much money are we losing by mass incarcerating, by overly punishing certain groups of people? I think that research, so if you think about just for this 23 county region, how many people who are getting felonies who are either not employed or underemployed, how much money are we not generating as an economy on a whole? Uh, I think once you start throwing numbers like that around, um, and yeah, I think the, the narrative then begins to change because we all miss out when there is a brilliant person who's held down by just something a mistake they made when they were yeah. 16 years old. Absolutely. And I think that's the that's that's, that's the conversation we probably. Like how, how much money is the citizen making off of our young folks being in the system? But that's but that would pale in comparison, right? So mm -hmm. the state would certainly you know, in the private contractors right, right. who lock these folks up. They make a certain amount of money, but that say so say they make eleven million dollars a year as private contractor. We're talking, but these folks are gainfully employed and able to have families and bring in tax credits. We're talking two, three, four, five hundred million dollars, uh, where where a private contractor is, you know, basically a neo slave owner uh, at this point. And, and so yeah. it, it pales in comparison. It's, it's the ideology has really held the South back in general. Is this idea that we can hold a group people down for a very small minority of people who benefit. And so we just have to be able to sort of break out of that mentality. Not not we, but uh, change that narrative to recognize that, yeah, you may make some money, 
but all of us can benefit uh, when my friend Jerome, we're just throwing a name out there, uh, can go from being in prison for 15 years uh, to coming home and making $70,000, $80,000 with his wife uh, and having a family. It's such, a, it's such a huge flip when we think about the impact you have on our, on our economy and our society as a whole. Ms. Page, we got uh, Jasmine Wright and Kate Brown in Cleveland County today doing training as we speak yes. and mobilizing that community. That's right. Yeah. Jasmine's on fire in Kagan, too. Yeah. Kagan's yeah. new to her organization, but she comes with, she's full of fire. Yeah, she yeah, we, nice they're good. Is there, is there Jasmine, yeah, little Jasmine Wright, yeah. Yeah, Jasmine Wright. Yeah. Then, she'll be, then she'll be today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we have um, uh, Lamar Bryan. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
everywhere, and we want you to be everywhere. Yeah. We want you to be everywhere. We want them to know that we are here in the Northeast. We will, and I shouldn't even say this, but maybe y'all tell me. <laughs> uh, Kate just told us that we we're number three on the leaderboard. Y'all tell me what that means. She said she was playing it when I called Monday. Number three on the leaderboard for organizing. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. As in the top three. On the national level. Is that state or national? Wow. That's pretty good. What Get you. She wants you to get a sandwich before you leave. Yeah.